GHS 
chapter 4. Take thee a tile, and lay it before thee, and portray upon it the city, even Jerusalem, and lay siege against it, and build a fort against it, and cast a mount against it. Set the camp also against it, and set battering rams against it round about. Moreover, take thou unto thee an iron pan, and set it for a wall of iron between thee and the city, and set thy face against it, and it shall be besieged, and thou shalt lay siege against it. This shall be a sign to the house of Israel. Lie thou also upon thy left side, and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it. According to the number of the days that thou shalt lie upon it, thou shalt bear their iniquity. For I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity, according to the number of the days, three hundred and ninety days. So shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. Therefore thou shalt set thy face toward the siege of Jerusalem, and thine arm shall be uncovered, and thou shalt prophesy against it. And behold, I will lay bands upon thee, and thou shalt not turn thee from one side to another, till thou hast ended the days of thy siege. Take thou also unto thee wheat, and barley, and beans, and lentils, and millet, and fitches, and put them in one vessel, and make thee bread thereof, according to the number of the days that thou shalt lie upon thy side. Three hundred and ninety days shalt thou eat thereof. And thy meat which thou shalt eat shall be by weight twenty shekels a day. From time to time shalt thou eat it. Thou shalt drink also water by measure, the sixth part of an hin. From time to time shalt thou drink. And thou shalt eat it as barley cakes. And thou shalt bake it with dung that cometh out of man in their sight. And the Lord said, even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whither I will drive them. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, my soul hath not been polluted. For from my youth up even till now have I not eaten of that which dieth of itself, or is torn in pieces, neither came there abominable flesh into my mouth. Then he said unto me, Lo, I have given thee cow's dung for man's dung, and thou shalt prepare thy bread therewith. Moreover he said unto me, Son of man, behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem, and they shall eat bread by weight and with care, and they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment, that they may want bread and water and be astonished one with another and consume away for their iniquity. Chapter 5 And thou, son of man, take thee a sharp knife, take thee a barber's razor, and cause it to pass upon thine head and upon thy beard. Then take thee balances to weigh and divide the hair. Thou shalt burn with fire a third part in the midst of the city, when the days of the siege are fulfilled. And thou shalt take a third part, and smite about it with a knife. And a third part thou shalt scatter in the wind. And I will draw out a sword after them. Thou shalt also take thereof a few in number, and bind them in thy skirts. Then take up them again, and cast them into the midst of the fire, and burn them in the fire. For thereof shall a fire come forth into all the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, This is Jerusalem. I have set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. And she hath changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations, and my statutes more than the countries that are round about her. For they have refused my judgments and my statutes, they have not walked in them. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Because ye multiplied more than the nations that are round about you, and have not walked in my statutes, neither have kept my judgments, neither have done according to the judgments of the nations that are round about you, therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, am against thee, and will execute judgments in the midst of thee in the sight of the nations. And I will do in thee that which I have not done, and whereunto I will not do any more the like, because of all thine abominations. Therefore the fathers shall eat the son. in the midst of thee, 
and the sons shall eat their fathers. And I will execute judgments in thee, and the whole remnant of thee will I scatter into all the winds. Wherefore, as I live, said the Lord God, surely because thou hast defiled my sanctuary with all thy detestable things and with all thine abominations, therefore will I also diminish thee. Neither shall mine eyes spare, neither will I have any pity. A third part of thee shall die with the pestilence, and with the famine shall they be consumed in the midst of thee. And a third part shall fall by the sword round about thee. And I will scatter a third part into all the winds, and I will draw out a sword after them. Thus shall mine anger be accomplished, and I will cause my fury to rest upon them, and I will be comforted. And they shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it in my zeal, when I have accomplished my fury in them. Moreover, I will make thee waste, and a reproach among the nations that are round about thee, in the sight of all that pass by. So it shall be a reproach and a taunt, an instruction and an astonishment unto the nations that are round about thee, when I shall execute judgments in thee in anger and in fury, and in furious rebukes. I, the Lord, have spoken it. When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you, and I will increase the famine upon you, and will break your staff of bread. So will I send upon you famine and evil beasts, and they shall bereave thee. And pestilence and blood shall pass through thee, and I will bring the sword upon thee. I, the Lord, have spoken it. Chapter 6 And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward the mountains of Israel, and prophesy against them, and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys. Behold, I, even I, will bring a sword upon you, and I will destroy your high places, and your altar shall be desolate, and your images shall be broken. And I will cast down your slain men before your idols, and I will lay the dead carcasses of the children of Israel before their idols, and I will scatter your bones round about your altars. In all your dwelling places the cities shall be laid waste, and the high places shall be desolate, that your altars may be laid waste, and made desolate, and your idols may be broken, and cease, and your images may be cut down, and your works may be abolished. And the slain shall fall in the midst of you, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Yet will I leave a remnant, that ye may have some that shall escape the sword among the nations, when ye shall be scattered through the countries. And they that escape of you shall remember me among the nations whither they shall be carried captives, because I am broken with their whorish heart, which hath departed from me, and with their eyes, which go a-whoring after their idols, and they shall loathe themselves for the evils which they have committed in all their abominations. And they shall know that I am the Lord, and that I have not said in vain that I would do this evil unto them. Thus saith the Lord God, Smite with thine hand, and stamp with thy foot, and say, Alas for all the evil abominations of the house of Israel, for they shall fall by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. He that is far off shall die of the pestilence, and he that is near shall fall by the sword, and he that remaineth and is besieged shall die by the famine. Thus will I accomplish my fury upon them. Then shall ye know that I am the Lord. When their slain men shall be among their idols round about their altars, upon every high hill, in all the tops of the mountains, and under every green tree, and under every thick oak, the place where they did offer sweet savour to all their idols. So will I stretch out my hand upon them, and make the land desolate, yea, more desolate than the wilderness toward Diblath, in all their habitations. And they shall know that I am the Lord. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment? A warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you are blanched in the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray.
When I said that I would follow, it was with an honest heart. But I did not fully understand the cost. Who show us what it really means to carry the cross. There will never be a reason to lose this confidence For I have learned where my assurance lies And the truth of this conviction makes me shout to the sky
praise the Lord. Lagos people, headquarters of Deeper Life. If you are there, I said praise the Lord. If you believe that today, this very night, something great, something glorious, something marvelous, something unforgettable, will happen in your life. Say amen. Of all those online, as the Lord has brought you here today to connect, I'll connect with you. And I'll connect you with heaven. Miracle. Healing. Salvation. Deliverance. Power explosion in your life in Jesus' name. His name is wonderful. His name works miracle. His name brings deliverance. And his name today, that name that can never fail, that name will do extraordinary in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Let me tell you what we have been tonight. I'm going to open the door. The door to your miracle. The door to explosion. The door to power. The door to deliverance. And as the door is open, you will enter in. As you enter, you'll find everything you have come for. Everything you have been praying about. Everything you desire from heaven, you're going to find everything as you enter tonight in Jesus' name. I will enter. Your voice is uh, like a matter of taking your voice away. I will enter. You'll enter and find the blessing of God. The miracle of God, the salvation of God, the power of God in your life in Jesus' name. And still there, rest of that time, Father, in the name of Jesus, we well, thank you tonight and bless your name. You are the God that cannot fail, the God of love, the God of power. The God of yesterday, the God of today, and the God of tomorrow. We're praying, oh Lord, everyone here tonight will experience that unfailing power in their lives in Jesus' name. The young, the old, the sick, the sinful, the suffering, the seekers. Everyone, everywhere, that your power in an unprecedented manner will touch everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Open the door for everyone. Keep the door open for everyone. And as that door remains open, everyone coming in, will come into your glory, into your power, into your goodness, and into explosion of miracles this day, everywhere in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered, and there is a confirmation in every life. In Jesus' name, we pray. Give me good international global crusade. Amen. God bless you. You can sit down.
Tonight we are coming to the word of God. And we are looking at Acts chapter 14 verse 27. Acts chapter 14. I am reading from verse 27. And when they were come. And had gathered the church together. They rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he, God, how he, our creator, how he, the lover of every soul, how he, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, how he, the one who is ever present, ever powerful, ever mighty, how he, the one who is blessing you tonight, how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. He, the almighty God, that opens and no one can shut. Shuts and no one can open. The apostles came and he told that large gathering of the assembled followers of Christ. And he said, the almighty, the great one, the lover of all his creation, he has opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles, everyone, to the blessing that Christ provided from the cross of Calvary. And tonight, that God has opened the door of miracle, door of salvation, door to performance, and door to manifestation in every life tonight in Jesus' name. They rehearsed, they retold, they explained, they expounded, they told the people how God had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. What does that mean? In Acts chapter 15, reading from verse 3, Acts chapter 15, reading from verse 3, it tells us there the open door, where that open door lay. And it says, I'm being brought on their way by the church, the pass through Phen Phenicia and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. And they caused great joy unto all the brethren. The Lord opened the way and the door at the gate of salvation, of conversion, of transformation, of a change, of what change of life for everyone. And tonight, as God says, I am God, I change not. And Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Today, like he did in the past, he's going to do today for you. For your family, for everyone online, is going to open the door into conversion, into salvation, into healing, into deliverance, into power manifestation tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 12, chapter 15. It says, Then all the multitudes kept silence to banner, banner declaring watch miracles and wonders as the doors were opened conversion took place salvation took place transformation of life took place their names were written in the book of life in heaven and then there were miracles and there were wonders when god opens the door for you 
and you see it with the eyes of faith, and you believe it with your whole heart. And then the Lord says, tonight, the door is open. Where are you coming? And then you stand up and with all your and all your mind and with readiness without any delay you come to the lord and you enter immediately tonight you are going to be saved immediately tonight you are going to be healed there will be miracles and wonders that god will work as he had wrought among the gentiles by them tonight I'm talking to you on opening the door to God's miracles and wonders. Opening the doors to God's miracles and wonders. In a global crusade like this, the Lord opens the door for multitudes, great number, for them to come into the salvation of the Lord, for them to come into the healing that Christ provides, for them to come into the supernatural exploits by the Spirit of God. He opens the door tonight. You are coming. What am I talking about there? You will come in. Say, I will come in. Salvation is inside the kingdom. I come in. Miracle inside the kingdom. I come in. Power inside the kingdom. I come in. And every, every yoke being broken. The moment you come into the kingdom of God, every yoke in your life will be broken. All the powers of Satan they were destroyed. No matter how long it's been there, that power from the world of darkness, that power from the one that hates your soul, hates your body, hates your life, the moment you come and you come in to the open door of the kingdom, all those shackles are broken in Jesus' name. Your life tonight. Say my life tonight. Your family tonight. Say in my family tonight. In my locality tonight. Every yoke will be broken. All the powers of the evil one will be destroyed. And the Lord gloriously, mightily, and powerfully, as he opens the door and you come in, there'll be no wasting of any time at all. In like this, bam, miracle will come upon you. Opening the door to God's miracles and wonders. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the impartial manifestation of miracles for everyone. That word impartial means whether you are low or high, whether you've been to church before or you've never been to church, whether you've uh, read the Bible before or not read the Bible before, religious, traditional, whatever. Once you push everything aside and you say tonight, I enter in, God is impartial. It will come upon you. It will come upon your children. And everyone asking, everyone desiring, everyone believing tonight, that power will work in your life in Jesus' name. Number one, the impartial manifestation of miracles for everyone. Number two, the immediate miracle. This one, there's no delay today. There's no comeback today. Where you are, at the moment, we begin to pray. As you hear the word, as you believe the word, as you accept the word, as you 
personalize the word and saying, yes, oh Lord, I am here. It is mine. There'll be an immediate miracle of mercy everywhere. Immediate miracle of mercy everywhere. Number three, the inexhaustible marvels, the marvels of Christ, the goodness of Christ, the impossibilities that will turn around and become possible in your life. That even you yourself and the people around you will say, this is marvelous. Only God could have done this. The inexhaustible marvels of the Messiah every time. It's always like that. It went about being good. All that were oppressed of the devil. Like he did before. That same Jesus. The same yesterday and today and forever. Everywhere today. Today. As he did every time at that time. And his marvels are not exhaustible. They're still there. As the ocean. As wide as humanity. The inexhaustible marvels of the Messiah every time. Everyone. Everywhere. Every time. You must have your own share. I will have mine. Or are you? I will have mine. It will touch your life tonight in Jesus' name. Let's look at number one. Is it impartial? The impartial manifestation of miracles for everyone. We're looking at Acts chapter 10. And we're reading from verse 34. Acts chapter 10, verse 34. The Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth. And what was true at that time is still true today. Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. The saying that God is impartial, that no matter who you are, and no matter where you are, the power of God manifesting today, the power of God moving in our midst today, I perceive, you must perceive in your heart, as he's calling you for salvation, as he's calling you for healing, as he's calling you for demonstration of heavenly power in your life, you must perceive in your own heart, you must understand, you must perceive, you must discern that our God, the great God of heaven, he loves all the people he has created. And because he created you, and he didn't create you for Satan to manipulate your life, make you to suffer, destroy your life, trample upon your life, he created you so that his purpose for which he sent Christ to the cross of Calvary to die for you, that purpose will be fulfilled as you perceive that in your heart, salvation available on the cross, healing available on the cross, and deliverance available through the cross. You perceive that in your heart that God is no respecter of persons, it will happen in your life in Jesus' name. And then in verse 38, it said how God, the loving God, how God, the merciful God, how God, 
the never failing God, how God, the powerful and mighty God, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. No other Jesus, there's no other name, there's no other personality, there's no other religious uh, person that can give you salvation and healing and deliverance and the power to overcome everything that comes against your life this jesus and this jesus only how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and what power who went about doing good everywhere he went everyone that needed a touch a transformation conversion salvation healing deliverance everyone he touched everyone, healed everyone, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. We learned something here that our God is impartial, his manifestation, his miracle, his transformation, his salvation available for everyone. And Jesus Christ is still here today. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Therefore, I should boldly say, the Lord is my helper. He will not forsake you today. And the moment, you know, the door is so put already, how God opened the door of faith, how God opened the door of salvation, how God opened the door of power, how God opened the door of marvelous manifestations of miracles unto everyone that will call upon him. And now God has anointed Jesus of Nazareth, of the Holy Ghost and with power, and is going about here, going about in every stage, going about in every country, going about to everyone, and is manifesting his miracle power tonight. He has gotten to you already, it's by your side already, and is the one assuring you in your heart right now. The door of faith, the door of salvation, the door of healing, the door of deliverance is opened for you already. Now, how do I enter? If the door is open, if the Almighty God is so merciful, is so loving, and He opens the door, how do I come in? Acts chapter 3, verse 19. In Acts chapter 3, verse 19, it tells us how to come in. It says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted. That is, you turn away from the wrong direction, the sinful direction, the evil direction, the satanic direction, the contradictory direction you have been looking at, it says, turn around. It says, repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. It will blot out your sins. It will take the melting, the razor of heaven, and clear every offense, every sin, every evil, every bad thing you've done in the past, the moment you turn, the moment you repent, the moment you say, Lord, I've been in darkness, I want to come to the light. I've been in evil, I want to come to your goodness. I've been an injurious person. I've been a dangerous person, but now I turn. And I come to the Lord, and I want his love to prevail in my heart, in my life. It will blot out all those things when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. The time of refreshing, of renewal, of reformation, of transformation tonight, as the door is open. That time of restoration, refreshing, renewal, 
will come in Jesus name you are dry your life will take on something fresh you've been tired weak weary and worn but new life will come to you in Jesus name I remember that's the impartial manifestation of miracles for everyone it's for you so ever in verse 26 it then tells us unto you first God have been raised up his son Jesus unto you first you're hearing and you are the first one as the door is open that you'll get him I will get him I said I will get him unto you first the Lord has honored you and he wants you to come in first and then after that you'll call on other people and you are show them what he has done for me he will do for you also unto you folks god having restored his son jesus sent him to bless you sent him to bless you sent him to bless you bless you with salvation bless you with new life Bless you with transformation. Bless you with power to live a newness of life. Bless you in turning you away from everything of the past that was evil. And he says, in turning away, in turning away. If you have your Bible there, what's the next word there? Every one of you. Every one of you. from your iniquities. That's what the Lord will do. You say, I don't know how to change. I don't know how to have a new life. I don't know how to have a new beginning. Just come in, come in. And then the Lord will do it and accomplish it for your life in Jesus' name. Unto you, unto you, unto you first. God have been raised up his son Jesus sent him to bless you in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. It tells us in Acts chapter 5, verse 12. Acts chapter 5, verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Then in verse 16, it tells us there came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed everyone and they were healed everyone everyone there tonight blind eyes will open everyone there tonight the lame will rise up and walk everyone there tonight that cancer will pass out of your body everyone there tonight that incurable disease will be healed in jesus name and they were healed, everyone. Do you see that? There's no impartiality there. The small, the great, the lowly, the high, the poor, the rich, the door is open for everyone. And they were healed, everyone. You will not miss your own. In Romans chapter 1, reading from verse 16, Romans chapter 1, verse 16, it says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I am not ashamed of the good news coming from Christ. I am not ashamed of the great news, manifestation of his power. 
that Christ has made available for everyone. I am not ashamed of the gospel, the good news of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone. You see that? It is the power of God unto salvation. Forgiveness is there. Freedom is there. The power to live, newness of life is there. Assurance that all your sins are taken away, all that is there. And Paul the Apostle said, I am not ashamed. And I say, I am not ashamed. And you say, you are not ashamed of the gospel, the good news of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth everyone that believeth as the door is open you know god is impartial and you believe it's open for you everyone that believeth that believeth that christ is savior he'll save me today he believeth that Christ is healer, he'll heal me today. That believeth, he believeth that Christ is deliverer, he'll deliver me today. That believeth that Christ is able to do all things in my life, and he will do it today for everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Impartial manifestation of miracles for everyone coming upon you. It will happen to you. The door is open. And all you have to do is get away from darkness and come to the light for God is light. And then his power will be manifested without any limitation in your life in Jesus' name. Number two is the immediate miracle of mercy everywhere immediate immediate you know if a man was to do something he may not have all the tools all the gadgets and all the things to make those things happen but in the case of god it's just to speak the word and it is done in your life that's why as you come today immediately everything god is going to do it will do in your life salvation immediate Healing immediate. Transformation of life immediate. Deliverance immediate. And the power to break every yoke out of your life immediate in Jesus' name. The immediate miracle of mercy. Miracle of mercy. And you don't have to say, Oh Lord, give me a chance. I want to improve on myself. It's not by marriage. Is the mercy of God. And as the mercy of God comes to them, coming through the open door, and then getting to you there today, that immediate miracle will happen in your life. I see God's power coming upon your life. Impossibilities becoming possible in your life. And the goodness of God and the greatness of God be manifested in your life even tonight in jesus name i see your testimony coming upon you and your testimony testimony of salvation testimony of all your sins forgiven testimony of the joy of salvation in your heart in your life testimony of the immediate manifestation of the glory and the power of God to roll away all your problems tonight in Jesus' name. The immediate miracle of mercy everywhere. Look at Jonah. In Jonah chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 1, and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the second time. Then in verse 2, it tells us, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I beat thee. Hold on. Jonah had a message. It wasn't a message he got from another prophet that that prophet could not deliver. And so sent him 
going to be in my mouthpiece. No. Jonah had a message, specific message for specific people and for a specific purpose. And so God said, arise and go to Nineveh. The Lord mentioned the place, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I be thee now. If Jonah became afraid of the Ninevites, of the look on their faces, and did not deliver the message of God unto them, those people will not have the door of mercy opened unto them. And if we, if we do not have the message that God has sent through his only begotten son, Christ at Calvary, the message of the gospel, the message of the good news, the message of the only way out of sin unto salvation, and the message that Christ himself has borne all our chastisement, and he has given us the healing, and by his stripes we are healed. If we don't deliver that message, the audience will not have the door of the miracles of mercy opened unto them. But Jonah got a message from God, and he remembered what God had said. Go tell them. Go proclaim unto them. Go preach unto them. That message I bid thee. Look at verse 3. Then we're told... In verse 3, so Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. According to the word of the Lord. There are people who are interested in listening to the tradition of the land. They're interested in listening to the religion of the land. They're interested in listening to entertainment of the preachers. But you know, he went to Nineveh and he did and he spoke and he declared just the word of the Lord, and that is your advantage as you hear the word of the Lord, and you give your heart and your mind and your will to the word of the Lord. It is that word connected with your faith that will open the door of the miracle of mercy for everyone, everywhere today, in Jesus' name. Now, Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And then in verse 4, it says, And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. What he was telling them is that they were not going to be overthrown that night. Not even that week, not even that month, they had 40 days to hear the message, accept the message, believe the message, personalize the message, and seek for the mercy of God. And they were wise. I pray you'll be wise. I said you will be wise. Today is the day of salvation. You'll be wise to get saved today. Today is the day of your miracle. You'll be wise to get your miracle tonight. Today is the day of your deliverance. And you'll get your deliverance tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 5. It says in verse 5, So the people of Nineveh believed God. They believed God of power. 
is God of love, is also God of justice and God of judgment. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. They believed God that God is not a sugar daddy. They believed God that God judges sin. They believed God that God cannot overlook evil. They believed God that is of purer eyes than to behold iniquity. They believed God that if they continued in their sin and they continued in their evil, that 40 days there will come an end for them. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them, even to the least of them. Genuine repentance. City-wide repentance. Nationwide repentance. Transparent repentance. It was not a superficial repentance. It was not a one-sided repentance. It, from the greatest of them, even to the least of them. And they were told in verse 6 that for the word came unto the king of Nineveh. Think about this now. Think about this now. The word came to the king of Nineveh. And he arose from his throne. And he laid his robes from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. They were told in verse 7, it says, And he caused it to be proclaimed, announced, and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast nor herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed, nor drink water. In verse 8, but let man and beast be covered for sackcloth and cry mightily unto God. Ye, let them turn that the secret. Let them turn, that's God's desire. Let them turn, that's God's expectation. Yes, required, demanded repentance. If they didn't repent, all that Jonah said would have been fulfilled. They would have died in their sins. And dying in their sins, they would have perished forever. They understood that Jonah was not in Nineveh for entertainment. The people that think that crusade time is entertainment time, is motivational time, is happy time, is dancing time. No, it's a serious time. A time to look at our lives. A time to see why all these judgments and the justice of God is taking over in any life, in any family, in any community, and to see what makes God angry. That God is angry at the sinner every day. And if that anger continues and the sinner does not repent, that sinner will die in his sin, will perish in his sin, and will go to hell forever and ever because he took the message of God for entertainment. But you know, they didn't take it for entertainment. The king said, let them cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way and from the violence, from the cruelty, from the murderous tendencies, from their bad attitude, from the violence that is in their hands. You see that the king was very clear and specific in talking about repentance, 
what they turn away from and how they turn with all their heart and they turn unto the Lord and they turn from the evil of the past and they turn to the righteousness of God even today look at verse 9 it says who can tell if God will turn and repent we will turn and repent that will pull the door open so that he God also as we turn and repent he will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that will perish not and then in verse 10 were told and God saw their works and God saw their mind and God saw their change of mind and God saw their repentance and God saw their sincerity and God saw that they were not taking him for granted and God saw that they took him serious God saw their works that they turned from their evil way and God repented of the evil that he had said he would do unto them, and he did it not. As you repent tonight, the judgment of God will be taken away from you. The anger of God will be taken away from you. And all those things that are happening, and say, why is this happening? Why is that happening? You know, many people do not understand. Many things happening to them. If they will think they have brought this upon themselves. Like the children of Israel, they murmured and they grumbled. And then the serpents came, biting them, and they were dying. It was because of what they had done. Like Abimelech, the king, he had taken the wife of Abraham. And then there was sterility and barrenness and sickness in the whole family. It was because of what they had done. Like Pharaoh and his army perished at the Red Sea. Why? It was because of what they had done. Like Ananas and Sapphira, they died prematurely. It was because of what they had done in lying to the Holy Ghost. And Jesus said, your sins are brought. I also said, your sins are brought. All these evil things upon you. But as we repent, as we turn and we say, Lord, we know that Jesus is the only Savior. And Jesus is able to turn every bad thing around in our lives after we repent. That goodness of the Lord will show up in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Well, they repented. Does God want you to repent? Does God expect any one of us to repent? In Acts chapter 17, verse 30. Acts chapter 17, verse 30, it tells us, and the times of this ignorance, God winged at. But now, now, at this very time, for Mondays, all men everywhere to repent. All men, young and old, all men, men and women, all men everywhere, here and over there, anywhere we are, salvation does not come except we turn away from sin, turn away from iniquity, and turn away from evil. The times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commanded everyone all men everywhere to repent and as you repent and turn the goodness of god will be showered upon your life look at second peter chapter 3 verse 9 second peter chapter 3 verse 9 the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness look at this but is long suffering towards what not willing that any should perish, not willing that any should perish. Nineveh did not perish, you will not perish. Lord, coming out of Sodom did not perish, you will not perish. And the people of Jesus' days that believed on the Lord, they didn't perish, you will not perish. I will not perish. I will not perish. He says, he's not willing that anyone shall perish, but that all 
should come to repentance. You see that? All should come to repentance. He, he doesn't want us to take Christ's suffering for our sins at Calvary. He doesn't want us to take that for a joke. He doesn't want us to take his call to repentance. Take that for a joke. He wants us to seriously make up our minds that today as the door of the miracle of mercy is opened for everyone, everywhere, will turn and repent so that the salvation of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord, will come upon every one of us. Come upon you. I said, come upon you. As you respond to the call of the Lord, to repentance, to a new life, you come into the grace of God through the open door. The Lord will show his miracle of mercy upon you tonight in Jesus' name. We come to point number three now. Yes of the Messiah everywhere, everywhere, by your side there, at your seat there, where you're standing over there. The Messiah is for everyone, everywhere. That's why it says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Uh, look at the first part of uh, Exodus chapter 34 and in verse 10. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant before all the people, a covenant of mercy before all the people, a covenant of the inexhaustible marvels of God before all the people. It says, all thy people, I will do marvels. Tonight, I will do marvels. For you, I will do marvels. Here, he will do marvels. In all over the country, everywhere, as we listen to the word, accept the word, apply the word to our lives, he will do marvels in every life in Jesus' name. And he says, such as have not been done in all the earth and in any nation. What you've never heard of, what you've never seen, what you've never experienced in your personal life, or even in your nation, or in any nation, it says what had never been told in all the earth and in any nation, it said it will accomplish in our lives today. The worst of lives, it will change tonight. The most violent of individuals, it will turn their lives around tonight. And the one who have felt they have seen so much, and they have seen they have almost gone beyond the day of grace. The day of grace comes upon you tonight, and that marvel of salvation, that marvel of transformation you have never experienced in all the earth, in any nation, you are going to experience tonight in Jesus' name. Salvation has come. Healing has come. Deliverance has come. The door is open. Look at Matthew chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 2. In Matthew chapter 9, reading from verse 2, it says, And behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, actually what had happened is when they came in, they couldn't find a way to get the man to Jesus. And then they thought, what are we going to do? Are we going to go back home like we came? Are you going to go back home like you came? I can't hear my people. They felt something must happen. We must get this man 
in front of Jesus. And the Mark account tells us they went to the roof and then they opened up the roof and they brought the man through that open channel to the very presence of Christ. And tonight, as we have opened the scriptures to you, and the open door is now before you, all you need now is to come through that open door as that man came through that open space and he came to the very presence of Christ. And as you come to the presence of Christ tonight, you'll find it's your savior. Your fight is your killer. Your fight is your deliverer. He brought him, this man, sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And then Jesus, seeing their face, said, On the sick of the palsy, son, be of good cheer, thy sin be forgiven thee. That's the first thing he will do tonight. I'm looking at you. Look at me here. What are you? It will forgive your sin. The chain of your sin, it will break. That bad habit, you can't stop by yourself. You come into the presence of Christ tonight. It will change your life. It will cleanse your life. It will blot out your transgression. It will forgive all your sins in Jesus' name. He said, son, be of good cheer. It's something to be happy about when your sins are forgiven. It's something to be happy about when your punishment is canceled. It's something to be happy about when your name is written in the book of life in heaven. Be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. After that forgiveness, don't go yet. Something else is coming. Look at verse 6. It tells us in verse 6, for day that ye may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then said he to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up thy bed, and go unto thine house they carried him there but jesus said you don't need to be carried anymore right so and the man did not say but you see i'm weak you see i can do nothing he said rise up when christ speaks to you and he says rise up power will follow that word rise up and you will rise up broken bones will be mended all the lameness will go away and the paralysis and the and the stroke everything will vanish away at a moment of time when he says rise up you rise up in jesus name when he says look and see your blind eyes will see and when he says breathe in and breathe out all the lungs that were clogged before, everything will open in Jesus' name. From the top of your head to the tip of your toe, healing, miracle will come upon your life in Jesus' name. He said, arise, take up thy bed, and go into, unto thy house. Look at verse 7. Verse 7 says, and he arose, and I will arise. And departed to his house. Look at him in your eyes with your mind of imagination. As he rose up, this is a person they carried. Four people carried him to that place. And Jesus said, arise. And nobody tried to pick him up. And he arose and he began to walk. Like I'm walking. And you will walk like I'm walking. Power, strength, might will come upon your life. You will walk in Jesus' name. Verse 8, look at verse 8. And when the multitude saw it, the multitude will see you. They'll see that miracle. They'll see that healing. They'll see the mighty power of God lifting you up in Jesus' name. In my belt, and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. Marvelous things are taking place in your life tonight. 
salvation available tonight healing available tonight miracles available tonight breaking of yoke available tonight deliverance available tonight there's the anointing that breaks every yoke tonight here and that anointing will work mightily in your life tonight in jesus name salvation available are you ready i said are you ready forgiveness available are you ready total freedom available are you ready inexhaustible marvels of the messiah available every time everywhere for every for everyone are you ready the goodness of god to be manifested in your life tonight available taking place now are you ready where are you it's bowed and eyes closed the lord is calling everyone now you can make the reconciliation with the almighty god right now it's ready to forgive your sin it's ready to change your life it's ready to take your guilt away but it demands repentance from you that you'll turn from your wicked ways from your violent ways and from sinful ways of your life and as you turn and repent each year will turn and repent and the evil he had purpose to do before you will not do again in your life heads bowed and eyes closed you're giving your life to the lord now you're saying oh lord i need your forgiveness i need your salvation i need your love i need your grace i need your mercy upon me so that all my sins the burden of my sin the guilt of my sin everything will vanish away i want it now wherever you are it's up your hand it's the moment of decision in your life moment of salvation in your life moment of going away from the path to hell and coming uh, to the very gate of heaven wherever you are raise up that hand if you are raising up your hand let heaven see you stand up on your feet you're saying lord i don't want to waste this moment of forgiveness of salvation of freedom from sin of breaking every yoke and every fetter of iniquity in my life i come now thank you lord because you are willing to forgive me lord i come lord i come lord i come and i turn away from darkness i turn to the light i turn away from my evil i turn to the good side lord i come over wherever you are raise up your hand and stand up and say lord with all sincerity we don't manifest in sincerity in the presence of god we don't act as hypocrites in the presence of god we don't lie in the presence of god there's no deception means like those who are deceptive in the presence of god they're taking calvary for a joke and god will not take it easy with them lord I come, I surrender my heart, my life, everything, I surrender unto you. I'm sorry for all the evil I've done. Forgive me, Lord. Change my life. Cleanse my heart. Blot out all my transgressions. Then thank him for his love. Thank him for his mercy. Thank him for his goodness merciful god for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life keep on standing i'm praying for you now father in the name of jesus we thank you at this time we know that you are serious with our salvation you're serious with our forgiveness 
and you see everyone, those who are sincere, and those who have called upon you, those who have turned away from darkness, turned away from sin, turned away from iniquity, and he turned to the Lord now as their personal Savior, save them in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, you brought out, blot out all their transgression, all their iniquity, and the guilt and the burden of sin take away from their lives. Let the joy of salvation, the joy of forgiveness, and the joy of freedom from sin come upon their lives right now. Those who are here, those who are over there, everywhere, online, let the joy of forgiveness and salvation come upon everyone now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. And uh, they'll give you slips to feel. And I said, you know, tell the truth there. When we have repented and gotten the salvation of the Lord, we don't tell lies anymore. Counselors, thank you very much. We do that in time. And we'll call on our pastor to please continue with the counseling at this time. Counselors, please uh, move around now. All our brethren, the, uh, those who are wearing pink now, just move around. Let's go to the far back. All those who are standing there, keep standing. The counselors will meet you now. They will take uh, your information. They'll give you a small slip. Fill it very well. Your address, the names you are called at home, your telephone number, complete. Let's move around. Counselors, please. See them. Let's move to the far back. There are so many people at the back there. Complete the slip. Write your complete address. Give them the correct address so that they'll be able to help you. Move around. Let's do that quickly. No, no. Tell the truth in your writing. When you have repented, you tell the truth. You can't tell that lies again. You can't deceive anybody again. Tell the truth. Just give your correct address, correct phone numbers. You have joined a new family now. You are a member of the body of Christ now. You are a new creature now. All things are passed away. No more lying, no more deception. Do that quickly. Do that quickly. And don't forget, there will be Believer's Lunch tomorrow at 2 p.m. at uh, the Hall of Deeper Life High School. All of you, you are there. Those who gave their life yesterday, you are also invited there. 2 p.m. Believer's Lunch. Come and dine with the people of God. You are now a child of God. You are now a beloved of God. Give the correct address. Do that quickly. Counselors, please move around. Let's move to the far back there. Remember that you cannot go home now. Nobody's going home now because miracle is coming. The power of God will be released very, very soon. So don't go. Don't go. And there are buses available. And the buses will wait for you. Get your miracle and you will testify. And then you will go home joyfully and happily. Today is your day. A day of salvation. A day of miracle for you. A day of repentance for you. A day to be sincere with God. And God will be sincere with you. Supervisors, please confirm. I want to know if you are finished. Oh my. Just wave your hand from the left side here. Let's do that. Move around. Move around. Check up. Check up. 
All our counselors, those wearing pink, make sure you stay with them. Stay with them so that uh, when the power come down, you'll be able to identify them. A time of power has come. Prepare yourself. Today, this night is your night. You are going to give your own testimony. Something is going to happen. Prepare your heart, prepare yourself. Supervisors, please, once you are finished, signify so that I can see you. Let's see those who are the far back there. Everyone is happy. Angels are rejoicing because of you tonight. Be happy. That joy will come out during the final prayer. When miracle explosion will begin in your life, you will see it. You will touch it. You will taste it. And you will know it. Prepare yourself. The time is very close now. Very, very close now. Counselors, we are waiting for you. Supervisors, please. Let's know when you are set. I'm waiting for the counselors, the supervisors. Okay. Okay, get ready now. The time has come. The time of power has come. The time of authority in your life has come. Remember those of you online, if you give your life to Christ, connect with Christ. Make sure you fill the form online so that we can get back to you. There are phone numbers there. Just scroll on your screen now. You will see the phone numbers and prepare yourself now for the time of miracle. The time of miracle is here now. Get yourself ready. Get yourself ready. Supervisors, we are set. Okay. Okay. Get ready now. Get ready now. The man of God is here now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said, Praise the Lord. Remember, God Himself opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And all you have to do at the gate, the door, the windows of heaven are opened is to come in. And to say, Lord, I believe. He anointed his only begotten son. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. The Holy Ghost and power. And it went about. It's still the same. Does not change. The same yesterday, today and forever. He went about doing good. He's going about tonight to do good in your life. To open the eyes of the blind. To make the lame to rise up and walk. And it's between you and the Lord. As he comes around, as he goes around, and then he comes to your side and say, Lord, I thank you. I know the door of faith is opened unto me, and it will do good in your life. Healing all that were oppressed of the devil, oppressed of the devil. God does not oppress anyone oppressed of the devil. It's Satan, it's the devil. And Christ conquered him, conquered the devil on the cross of Calvary. And for you tonight, he conquered him in Jesus' name. Healing all that are oppressed of the devil, for God 
was with him and is still with him and jesus sacrificed and paid for your redemption and paid for your healing and when jesus says yes and jesus says it's all right and jesus says rise up and walk no other power can contradict that when he says yes in your life nobody can say no i said when he says yes in your life nobody can say no he says yes your eyes will be opened yes you'll rise up and walk yes you'll have a miracle yes you'll have your healing yes every yoke will book in your life yes and all the things that are evil the lord will reverse everything in your life tonight in jesus name the door is open and you're coming in now you're coming into your miracle you're coming into your healing you're coming into your deliverance it is happening right now. Where are you? You raise up one hand and lay the other hand upon yourself and say, yes, Lord, I'm here. I know the door is open and I come in and miracle will meet you right there. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We bless your name. You are a God of love, a God of mercy, a God of power, a God of knowledge, a God of glory. And you see everyone everywhere. And Lord, we know that your power will never fail. The name of Jesus will never fail. And we'll bring everyone before you now at the open door, open door to the miracles of, the, of God. Touch their lives in Jesus' name. When you say yes, no Satan can say no. No devil can say no. No occulty power can say no. And no man, no woman anywhere can say no. You say yes to a miracle. Yes to our healing. Yes to our deliverance. Yes to the manifestation of power. And there is no man, no woman that can say no to your miracle power in Jesus' name. You say yes to blind eyes being opened. You have said yes to insanity being taken away. You have said yes to that swelling going away from the tummy. You have said yes to deliverance and the breaking of yoke for everyone. You have said yes that you come to deliver everyone. Bring your deliverance upon everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Marvelous miracle in your life. Marvelous operation in your life. Marvelous manifestation in your life. Receive your miracle in Jesus' name. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. Let the power that breaks every yoke come upon your life now and break every yoke in your life. Miracle to the right. Miracle to the left, miracle to the front, miracle for the young, miracle for the old, miracle for the infirm, miracle everywhere now in Jesus' name. Confirm your mighty power in every, every life. Thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. It is done. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Check up yourself. Praise the Lord. Check up yourself now. If you are blind before, open your eyes. Heaven has said yes, your miracle, you can see. If you want lame before, check up yourself. Heaven has said yes. Your miracle, you rise up and walk. Anything swollen in your body before, check up. Heaven has said yes. Your miracle. And nobody can say no. Tonight is the night of your healing. The night of your deliverance. The night of yokes being broken in your life. Check up. Your miracle is there. The door is open, rise up, and go through the open door. You'll never be the same again 
In Jesus' name. Come down, the miracle is there.